Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I want to share with you 10 VS Code extensions that help me write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, there are other ones I use as well, but I figured I'd start with just 10 uh, rather than making this a really long video. Now, I'm going to show you them in real life projects. So, like here, I've got a Google Calendar event page that is coming to the channel soon. It shows you how to basically query your own Google Calendar using the Google Calendar API and then display that however you want on your page, like we've got over this way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at 10 extensions. And I'm going to start with this project, then kind of move through some other projects I've done on the channel before as well to show off these extensions. And you can reach the extensions over here by clicking, or you can, I think, on Mac hit Command Shift X if you want as well. Uh, just a, a note first, if you click up here, you can actually decide which you see. So if you only want to see those that are enabled, like I've got, or you can check multiples and see multiples of those. You also get to auto update extensions and decide how to kind of do that, enable everything. And yeah, there's several options here that may be worth checking out. The first one I want to show you though is called auto rename tag. And this is a really helpful little extension. You know how it is to come in here and you want to rename this to H2. And normally you'd have to rename this and the final closing tag. But if I type H2 with this enabled right here, you see both of them get changed automatically. That's really helpful, especially if you're like changing a tag for like a section that is a whole section area. You have to scroll all the way down and find that, but not with this. You just start typing and it will change for you automatically. All right, the next one here is actually the next one on our list here, better comments. And let me go ahead and just close that sidebar so that we're not, uh, we, we can see a little bit more what's going on. Now, if I come in here, there's several different options you can have here. So if I'm just writing a comment with like it, command forward slash allows me to do that, I can hit a few different things. If I just type to do like that, it highlights it orange. So I could say like add banner or something like that. Now there's other options as well. So an exclamation point says like a warning symbol. You can put something in there and you can see how that catches your eye. Uh, you could also come in here and say something like question mark uh, is this annoying or something like that you can write questions and then the other one that's uh, enabled by default is like an info thing where you can type something in here now this happens to be pretty close to the theme that i'm using uh, this green so that wouldn't distinguish itself very well but you can customize these as well and actually add your own if you want to all right so that's the second one uh, the third one is something called code snap right here. And you can basically take cool pictures of uh, your code. So let's close this and I'm going to jump over to my JavaScript file here. And let's just grab something like this. And if I hit command shift P, I can then look for code snap and hit that. And it actually gives me a preview of what this would look like. And if I come over this way, I can actually move it and do whatever I want. So I can make it smaller like this, and it just automatically dynamically updates. And I'm ready, I click this, and it actually lets me save a PNG to my desktop or wherever, wherever I would want. All right, so let's close that out. So that's the third extension. The fourth extension is something called Color Highlight. Let me jump over here to CSS. And now in this project, I'm using Tailwind, but normally I would be using just normal CSS colors. So I can come in here and start typing whatever, and you can see even as I'm typing, it's actually updating in real time and showing me the color. Now it also works with, with things like HSL. So zero, I don't know, like 50%, and maybe like, I don't know, 70%, something like that. And it actually shows me that color as well. So it, it works with any of kind of the normal colors you would use in CSS. Now let's transition to another project. This is one I've done recently on the channel uh, where you've got all these watch faces kind of updating in real time. Let's close this down. And this one is called import cost. And you can see up here, I'm actually importing a package and it tells me exactly how much that thing costs, how heavy it is. It even will highlight it like green or yellow or red, depending on the size of the package. You know, this one's very, very small, the state FNS TZ. And so it's just 6.6 .6, and it gives a green color here. So I get an indication for how heavy it is. And it even gives me a G zipped size as well. All right, continuing down the stack to another project here. This is one I did on Notion where you're actually pulling this data live from your Notion uh, database and then just populating a site with it using the Netlify API. What I'm gonna show you here is something called Get Lens. So if I close the sidebar here, you can see it's actually telling me who committed last time and how long ago it was. If I come over this way, you can see each of these, each line actually gives me a Git blame. Now there's a bunch of other things you can do with this. If I open this up over here, it is called Git Lens right here. 
and it's got a bunch of stuff you can do and you can actually pay for a bunch of more, more things, more features, but this blame thing is super helpful along with changes, a heat map. It'll actually show you how recently files were changed. There's just so many things you can do with this extension, but just by its very basic nature, it's really helpful to kind of quickly see when was the last time I updated this line or, or who updated this line last. Now, let me actually open up a file here and let's look at an HTML file because I want to show you another extension called Prettier. Now, you've probably heard of Prettier before. Uh, what it does is it basically uh, makes your code look consistent all throughout and it's pretty opinionated in how it does it, but it's nice just to have something kind of style your code and you don't have to worry about it. You can see I've actually got a little indication right here. And if I were to click on this, it kind of walks me through the different settings I have, but all I have to do is basically come in here and if I were to change some of this and then save, it'll actually reset it to how it should look. So it'll actually compress it and make it work as you'd expect. The eighth one is called text pastry. And I think this one's really helpful. Let's say I'm coming in here. Let's see, I don't think I had anything much going on in this project because most of it was loaded with JavaScript. But let's say I'm adding a bunch of images here. And let's say I add them like this and I call this like image. And then I copy it down a bunch of times and realize, oh no, I meant to actually add image one, image two, image three. Well, you can actually go and grab multiple selections just with command option and then like the up arrow to grab this and then hit command shift P and type text pastry. And you can do one to whatever or A to whatever or zero to whatever. And you can use this in JavaScript. Or you can use this in HTML, whatever you want. So here I'm gonna do the one to X and you'll notice it just gives me one to eight for each of my cursors. So that's really helpful when you're building things out or you quickly just need to kind of iterate on something. All right, speaking of multiple cursors, let's go to one final project. This is one we did on reviews on the channel. Oftentimes in your JavaScript, you have different variables that are named something very similar. So like in this case, um, let's see, I've got this reviews variable right here. And let's say that I've got reviews here, I've got reviews here, and I wanna change all of those to review and not reviews. I realize that I've made a mistake. Well, if I hit Command Shift L, number one, it will select every uh, version of reviews on the page, whether or not it's capitalized. But with this ninth extension called multiple cursor case preserve, what I can do is just start typing review. And you'll notice that here it's review and here it's review with a capital R because it's preserving the case of whatever was selected. And that's happening all throughout the document. So I don't have to worry about making sure that I only select those that are lowercase for instance, or uppercase. This handy little extension takes care of that for me. Now let me jump in here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this HTML document. Now, in this case, you can see here, I've got this style sheet, but let's say it was nested a little bit and I wasn't sure exactly where uh, to find it. And I don't want to have to open the sidebar to check. Well, there's another extension called Path IntelliSense. So if I've got a link sheet here and I don't remember exactly where it's at, I can just start typing and it will figure it out for me. So let's say I hit type like that and then I just type CSS. Well, it's actually gonna search through all my documents and find something called style.css. And now that's the exact file that I need. And you can see here, it drags it in for me automatically with path IntelliSense. I hope at least one of these extensions was new to you and might be a help to you as you develop in VS Code. If you're interested in any of the projects, I'll include links to those below. And of course, if you don't want to miss any of those upcoming projects, make sure you subscribe and like the video, and I will catch you next time. Happy coding.